Hello there, welcome to CXC Math TV. Today we're going to be solving rational inequalities. Rational inequalities are inequalities that are of the form ax plus b divided by cx plus d greater than or equal to zero or less than or equal to zero. Now we want to make it as short as possible and as concise as possible. So to find the solution region of rational inequality, the only thing that we're going to do is to convert it to quadratic inequality by multiplying through the square of the denominator. We're just going to multiply both sides by the square of the denominator and then convert it to a quadratic inequality. In the last video, we looked at solving quadratic inequality and so we will be fine. So the best way to do these types of questions is with some examples. So we're going to do four. We're going to do the first one together. And then you can pause and attempt the next three. So the first one, it says solve the following rational inequality. Question one, we have x minus one over x minus seven less than zero. Remember what we said, we need to convert it to a quadratic inequality. So first we're gonna do is multiply through by the square of the denominator. In this case, x minus seven all square. When you multiply both sides by x minus 7 all square, x minus 7 all square is x minus 7 times x minus 7. So a x minus 7 from the denominator cancels with one of the x minus 7 in the numerator. On the right hand side, we have less than 0, but 0 times anything is 0. And so we end up with x minus 1 times x minus 7 is less than 0. This is in the form y is less than zero. So the two roots would be one and seven. Oh. So if we draw our graph, we have the roots one and seven, and we want the portion of the graph when y is less than zero. We can shade that region in black. And so x is going to be between one and seven. That's your answer. X is between one and seven. Nice. So go ahead and pause the video and try question number two x plus 5 divided by x minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. So as you pause an attempt, the first thing that we say we do, we multiply through by the square of the denominator. So we'll multiply by x minus 4 all square. Now our x minus 4, going to cancel with one of the x minus 4 from the denominator. And 0 times anything is 0. So we're left back with x plus 5 times x minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. Hey. Now that it's in the form y greater than or equal to 0, we can look at the two roots. Solving x plus 5 equals 0, we'll get x to be negative 5. Solving x minus 4 to be 0, we'll get the root of 4. And so, we want the portion of the graph that is above the y-axis. So that's going to be x less than or equal to negative 5 or x greater than 4. No, no, you're probably noticing why did we not put greater than or equal to 4? Now notice we put x strictly greater than 4 because a value of 4 would make the inequality undefined. Look at what I'm saying. If you put in x equal 4 as part of your solution, Replace x with 4. 4 plus 5 over 4 minus 4 is 9 over 0. That is math error in your calculator or undefined. But if you start from x being equal to 5, you notice that it's going to satisfy the inequality. That's just going to give us 10 over 1, which is 10, and 10 is greater than 0. That is true. So therefore, we have to write that x is less than or equal to negative 5, or x is greater than Four. That's the solution. You have to look out for when it is going to be undefined. All right? So pause the video and attempt this one now. All right. So as you would have noticed that this is not in the standard form that we've been working with so far. We want to get it in the form y less than or equal to zero. So we can subtract three from both sides. And once we subtract 3 from both sides, we have x plus 32 
over x plus 6 minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. What we can then do is find the LCM, meaning write it as one fraction. Once you write it as one fraction, it is going to become x plus 32 minus 3x minus 18 over x plus 6 less than or equal to 0. That simplifies to be 14 minus 2x over x plus 6 less than or equal to 0. Now we can multiply through by the square of the denominator, which is what we have been doing. And then we're going to simplify it to become 14 minus 2x times x plus 6 less than or equal to 0. Yes, you might be saying I skipped a step. Yes, I did. Because we have been, we know that when we multiply through by the square of the denominator, one of the x plus 6 is going to cancel with one of the x plus 6. So that is why that step has been skipped. But that's okay. So now, if you were to look at it, the two roots would be negative 6 and positive 7. So if we put that on the graph, we want the portion of the graph when y is less than or equal to 0. So if we shade that region, it's going to be when x is less than negative 6 or when x is greater than or equal to 7. Why did we put x being strictly less than negative 6? Because if you put x as negative 6, it's going to be undefined. All right, so always look out for that. All right, one final question for you to attempt. x plus 68 over x plus 8 greater than or equal to 5. Pause and attempt. All right, so again, the first thing we do is put it in its standard form. So x plus 68 over x plus 8 greater than or equal to 5. We subtract 5 from both sides. And then we write it as one fraction. When we write it as one fraction, it is going to simplify to be x plus 32 minus 5x minus 40 over x plus 8 greater than or equal to 0. That simplifies to be minus 8 minus 4x over x plus 8 greater than or equal to 0. We can then multiply through by x plus 8 all square and it simplifies to be minus 8 minus 4x times x plus 8 greater than or equal to 0. And so if we were to put the roots on the graph, the roots are going to be the negative 8 and solving minus 8x minus 4x equals 0, you get 2. So the roots are negative 8 and 2. And we want when the graph is above, above the line y equals 0. So that is going to be in that region right there. That's the part of the curve that we want. So x is going to be greater than negative 8, but less than or equal to 2. Nice. All right. And so in this video, we looked at number 2, determining the solution sets of inequalities of this form, the rational inequality. And in the previous video, we looked at solving quadratic inequalities. So now that we've completed quadratic inequalities, I hope this video was very beneficial. All right, so make sure to practice. The best way to understand these questions is by practicing, looking at an example and practicing. All right, so keep on practicing and do your best. All right, so stay tuned to CXC Math TV. That's it for today. See you next time and have fun.